Welcome to the Lock Sportscast, your weekly source for Lock Sport News. This is episode 15. I'm your host, Charles Current. In today's episode, we have an update on Brummy Lock Pickers Corbin, an update on the Community Challenge Lock by Rune Picker, Georgia Jim, and Picking Patriot, the latest Reddit karate belt counts, a few new belt announcements, interviews are coming to the Lock Sportscast, YouTube Lock Sport Video Awards, maybe? and even more giveaways. For full show notes, including links, please visit www.thelocksportscast.com. You can find this show on most podcast apps on YouTube and at thelocksportscast.com. Let's just jump right into the news this week. We have an article in the Locksmith Ledger that was entitled Quickset Smart Key Decoder Opens New Doors. And you may have seen videos about this tool already on YouTube, but I'll just read a little bit of highlights from the article here. The new LockTech product is a breakthrough tool for new locksmiths. The brilliance of smart key locks wasn't their capability to be rekeyed by an end user in the field so much as it was their resistance to being picked via traditional means. Unfortunately, the locks failed regularly because of their tiny and fragile components, and users would brick or freeze up the locks occasionally during the change process, which led to replacement and additional cost. There never was any consistent or reliable technique to defeating a smart key lock. Fear not, locksmiths. Today marks the dawn of a new era. LockTech, the company behind tools such as the AccuReader, the Honda Acura Ignition Roll Pin Ignition Removal Kit, and other ignition removal tools, created a reliable method to decode those enigmatic smart key locks no matter which generation. It's called, obviously enough, the Quick Set Smart Key Decoder. Then the article goes on into more detail about how it works, and they include a link to a video in case you haven't already seen anything about this. You can go check out that and other videos on YouTube, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes. There was also shared with me an article on WikiHow entitled How to Unlock a Door, and it goes into different methods for opening a door. And the first section is titled Opening a Locked Door Without a Key. And the section titles are Using a Credit Card on a Spring Lock, Use a Small Screwdriver or Thin Tool on Interior Doors, Pick the Lock, Remove the Hinges, and Annihilate the Lock with a Hammer. Then they have another section entitled Opening a Jammed Lock. And the sections for that are push or pull the door as you turn the key, turn the key both directions, lubricate the lock, examine the keys, know when to apply force, and try other methods. I'll have a link to that in the show notes if you want to check it out. All right, in community news, Brummy Lock Pickers Corbin is still unpicked. Cherokee was the last one with the lock. She was able to make a key that works in it to prove that the lock itself works, but she wasn't able to pick it. So we know it's a working lock, but it's also still unpicked. Now, because I haven't covered this before, I'll give a quick overview of some of the people that have had the lock in their possession and have attempted on it. We have Brummy Lock Picker, of course, Pompey Picker, Roy. Salmons, Lockpicking Coal Miner, Murloc 68, Chris Capoon, and Cherokee. And now it'll be moving on to Chaz's Lockpicking. So we'll wish him luck, and I'm really hoping somebody will get this thing open. I'll have a link in the show notes to the playlist uh, for the Corbin, and or you can do a search for hashtag PickMyCorbin and find all of those videos. It is, it's proving to be a very difficult lock. 
I also received an email informing me that the community challenge lock by Rune Picker, Georgia Jim, and Picking Patriot is now complete. That lock is going to be sent to Mr. Paradise to be picked. So I will have a link in the show notes to his channel, along with Rune Picker, Georgia Jim, and Picking Patriot. But I will have a link to Mr. Paradise's channel. So if you don't already subscribe, you can go over there and subscribe to make sure you get to watch that video as soon as he makes his attempt on it. And in the Karate Belt section this week, we have the latest counts for the Reddit belt numbers. This doesn't include the Discord, but a lot of them overlap. This is a pretty good indication of the overall community. There were a total currently of 3,815 of the members that have belts. Of those, 671, or about 17.6%, are white belts. 1,092, or about 28.6%, are yellow belts. 1,323, or 34.7%, are orange belts. 412, or approximately 10.8%, are green. 142, or about 3.7% are blue, 70, or 1.8% are purple, 42, and 1.1% are brown, 30, or 0.8% are red, and 33, or 0.9% are black. So if you're in the black belt level, you're in the top 1%. If you're red belt level, you're in the top 2%. If you're a brown belt level, you're in the top 3%. And the, if you're purple, you're in the top about 5%. All right, and now that we have that understanding, that reference now, this, month, this week, HV Logic earned his purple belt. Wicked earned his brown belt. And Norlin got his black belt. So congratulations, gentlemen, and especially Norlin. Those are amazing achievements, and way to go, Norlin. All right, let's, uh, let's do the lockpicking criminal section. In Moorhead, Minnesota, a Fargo man is accused of stealing the tools from a locksmith who helped him after he was locked out of his car in the Target parking lot. According to court documents filed in Clay County District Court, police were called to the Target store on a report of disturbance. When police arrived at the parking lot, a Kurtz lock and key service employee told them Sean Michael Pendraza had called to get keys made for his car. It was cold outside, the locksmith explained, so he let Pendraza sit inside his vehicle while he worked on the car. When the locksmith finished and Pendraza got out, he noticed that the lock pick and two tension wrenches were missing from his vehicle. He confronted him about the theft, and he initially, or Pendraza initially denied it. Pendraza, he eventually took the tools out of his jacket pocket and begged the locksmith not to call police because he was wanted on an outstanding warrant. Police arrested Pendraza, took him to the Clay County Jail, where court documents say they discovered an illegal benzodiazepam pill in his pocket. Pendraza, 34 was charged with one count of felony fifth-degree drug possession and one count of misdemeanor theft. His next court appearance is set for April. Some people never learn. You're, out, you're wanted on a warrant, and you have illegal drugs on you, so you decide to steal from the locksmith who's there to help you. Really? All right, in Chapin, South Carolina, Chicken Butt Donuts was robbed this week. Owner Trey Dabney said, We came in Tuesday morning and we found the back door had been pried open and the money in the register had been taken and our safe had been taken. That's the kind of thing that doesn't usually happen out in this neck of the woods. Two things there. Why was there money still in the register? And two... How did they secure the safe, or did they? They're leaving money in the register 
were they even bothering to secure the safe, bolt it down, use an M4 safe? Obviously not. But when I worked retail, we emptied the registers every night and put it in a in-floor safe. But anyway. Richland deputies arrested 20-year-old Ryan Conte in connection with the case and have charged him with vandalism, safe cracking, larceny, and second-degree burglary. Uh, links to all the news articles are in the show notes. Now I'd like to take a break and say thank you to everyone that contributed to this episode. The executive producers for this episode are Medler, PandaFrog, and Michael Gilchrist. Those are my Patreon subscribers, and thank you very much. Content producers for this episode are PandaFrog, Michael Gilchrist, Redheaded Lockpicker, RunePicker, Lowell Forbes, and Starrylock. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Georgia Jim for his review on Apple Podcasts. It was titled, Great Resource for the Lock Support Community. This is a great podcast and helps tie together the goings-on in different online lock support communities, including giveaways, accomplishments, and advancements in the sport. So thank you, Georgia Jim. I really appreciate you doing that. Remember, this show is only possible because of the information that's provided by you, the community. So if you're getting a value out of this podcast, please help support it by providing me with news, links, information, giveaways, Anything you're doing in the community or you think the community could benefit from knowing, send it my way. Don't think somebody else will because quite often they don't. This week's episode is short and contains some filler material of my own because there just wasn't much sent in. A few people really try all the time, but they can't provide everything all the time. And don't forget to share the podcast with your lockpicking friends. You can also leave a review like Georgia Jim on your favorite podcast platform or comment and thumbs up on YouTube. You can also subscribe on Patreon or PayPal. All right, and a little information on the state of the podcast before we get on to the other stuff here. I've recorded a couple of interviews that will be in future episodes as soon as I get them all edited together. I have some technical issues because my equipment is not as up to the task as I thought. So it might take me a little bit to get them edited, but I did do interviews with Greg Waugh of Packlock and locksmith Jeff Moss, who's on YouTube. A lot of you probably know him. So look for those to come in the future, but we'll just have to see how that works out. Also, I've been toying with the idea of doing Lock Sport YouTube Awards. And I need some feedback from the community. First of all, do you even think this isn't a good idea for me to be doing? Uh, if not, you know, I can bag the idea, but it's kind of fun. I, it was be mostly just for fun. But I would need a few suggestions for categories. Some stuff I've come up with on my own and with my family here were maybe things like most creative giveaway. Best giveaway challenge, best giveaway prize, best editing, best audio, best lighting, most informative video, most impressive pick, most creative video, fastest pick of, you know, some type of lock. Maybe it could be multiple different types. I don't know. Best out of the package pick, best challenge lock, things like that, or anything else you guys could think of. So send me in some ideas, pop over to my Discord, something. Let me know if you think this is a bad idea, if you think this is a great idea. If you think it's a good idea, give me some suggestions on extra categories. Uh, also, I'd be looking for suggestions on a name for the award. Uh, some suggestions by my wife and son were we have Lockies. Instead of like Streamies, it'd be Lockies. Pickies, lock wards. And the format would be we would have a nomination phase, a voting phase, and then we would have the presentation phase. In the nomination phase, everyone would be able to nominate one video for each of the defined categories. 
you don't have to nominate a video in each category, but you can only nominate one video in each category. Each person can only nominate one video in each category. It can't be their own video, and it can't be one of my videos. Obviously, I'm disqualified. Then once we had nominees set aside, we would go in and we would do a... I would publish a list of what the nominees were for each category, and then people would be able to watch those videos again and then uh, vote on one video in each category. You don't have to vote in every category, but you can only vote for one video in each category. All nominations and voting would be done in either email or direct message with me, not in public, so that there can't... I wouldn't want there to be hurt feelings. Somebody going, oh, well, why did he vote for him instead of me type thing? It's something I'm a little sensitive on this, and that's why I want some feedback from you guys if this is a good idea. Would this be a fun thing for everybody, or would it potentially breed some resentment that we don't want in the community? Give me your feedback on that. That's something I'm particularly touchy on. I don't want to cause any drama, any strife in the community. And if everybody thinks that would be a problem here, I can just bag the idea. I haven't decided on what trophies or awards would be yet. I'm just trying to figure out if this is even a something people would want and what the format would be. I don't have a main topic this week, so we'll just jump right on to sales. Uh, I'll reiterate that Multipick has a promo code for Lockpickers United, the LPU Rocks with a Z 2020. Code is active on any orders over 75 euros until September 30th and provides a 4% discount. That code will be in the show notes, also in the Lockpickers United Discord. And in giveaways, we have Rune Picker is having a new giveaway. Hashtag RP Spicy Challenge. I'm not going to give a complete list of the rules. You have to check out his video, which will be linked in the show notes, to get the full rules. But the short of it is you have to film in one take, SPPing a challenge lock with at least six changes, or SPP a naughty bucket lock. Must gut the challenge lock or naughty bucket lock if possible. And you have to take a shot of Tabasco or hotter hot sauce before you start picking. You can have multiple entries as long as you use hotter sauce for each entry and follow all the rules that he will give you in his video. The giveaway will end once his wife comes back from maternity leave, which is estimated to be December 1st, 2020. And I just want to congratulate you on the new addition to your family that's coming up here. So, And then Panda Frog is having a giveaway. A lot of you probably already know about it, but it's hashtag small1250. This, again, is not a complete list of the rules, but you have to use that hashtag, and it's got, you have to pick the smallest lock you have available. So pick the smallest lock in your collection. So uh, it's kind of entertaining. Small, small locks can be a bigger challenge than you think. So get over there and check that out and check out the entries. There are quite a few already. Michael Gilchrist is having his 100 subscriber giveaway. The hashtag Norlin100. There are two different packages, one for beginner, one for a little more advanced. There are slightly different rules for entering the two different packages. So get over to his channel and check it out. And I just realized that's Norlin100. Michael, are you the Norlin that just got his black belt on Lockpickers United? Let me know. Yes or no. Alex Who, Mad Aussie Challenge is still going on. Um, even if you're not entered, the videos are entertaining. So do a search for the hashtag Mad Aussie Challenge, even if you're not entering, and check some of these out. Um, you can listen to my episode of the Lock Sportscast number 14 for more details, or you can just go over and check out the videos. 
And Lowell Forbes is still doing his one-year celebration giveaway. It's running till the end of September. Hashtag Lowell's Wild One Year. I'll have you go over and check out his video, number 83, hashtag Lowell's Wild One Year, Community Appreciation, GAW. Go check out that video for the full rules and check out the, the video entries for that. They are quite entertaining as well. And don't forget about Starlock. He has the Shout Out Monday series where he highlights a channel with fewer than 100 subs and tries to incentivize people to subscribe to that channel by doing a monthly giveaway for a Law Lock Tools gift certificate. It's hashtag Shout Out Monday. It's a great way to find new channels and also a chance to win a prize. Uh, so make sure to check out Starlock's channel. He is a big supporter of the community. He does a lot for the community and we really need to show him as much support as possible and there's still a little bit of time for you ladies to get into hashtag woman in lock sport giveaway by starry lock it is for women or girls in lock sport only you can go check out his video for the exact rules basically you have to make a video of you picking a lock and the deadline is September 18th. So get over there and check that out. Links in the show notes to all of these giveaways. And last but not least, Charles Builds Crap and the Lock Sports Casts Pack Lock a Month giveaway. August subscriber has been drawn. That is Starry Lock. I did it live on the Charles Builds Crap channel. So you can go check out that draw over there. And I am collecting entries for this month's Pack Lock Month giveaway. I think I'm up to 22 right now. So make sure you send in your information or share the podcast with others and tag me to get entered in that. Remember, this podcast needs your support. You can support the podcast by sending in your Locksport related information. Anything that you think the community should be interested in or you want the community to know, even even little things. If you don't think it's worthy, it probably is. If you think somebody else will have definitely sent this in, they probably haven't. So make sure you send in anything you have. Weeks like this, I don't get much news. So every little thing is important. Uh, you can share the show with your lock picking friends. You can leave a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform. Leave a comment on YouTube and thumb it up. You can subscribe on Patreon or donate via PayPal. If you support the show, I will give you a producer credit and share your channel in the show notes. So make sure you send me a link. Thank you. And remember, keep it legal. Thank you.